What is up you guys? So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do what is arguably one of the easiest pour methods, and it is called a puddle pour. So I'm going to mix my resin as I usually would. For today, I'm going to use Art Coat by Stone Coat Countertops. It is my favorite resin for a number of reasons. Um, it's got a really long working time. It's probably like the number one thing that I look for in resin other than the fact that it has to have really good UV stabilization. And the reason for that is, is because if you use a lot of white in your artwork, like if you were gonna do an ocean pour or something like that, you don't want your color to yellow. And if your resin isn't UV resistant, then it will 100% yellow on you. And you don't want your colors to change. You pick them out for a reason. So you want them to stay that color. So this resin is a one-to-one, -one, which means it is equal parts of resin to hardener. And I use these little graduated mixing cups that give me the ratios that I will need to pour on or two. So for example, this one, I did three ounces of part A, and then I did three ounces of part B. So I did six ounces total. One to one ratio resins are the most easy to work with because it's just equal. It, whatever you pour of one, you pour of the other. It's really important to make sure that you do um, equal parts. You measure correctly because if you have too much resin, and not enough hardener, it won't set up proper. And if you have too much hardener, not enough resin, it won't set up proper. Um, it'll either never set up at all, or it will set up too quickly. And for this resin having like, it advertises like a 75 minute working time. I've worked it beyond two hours before. And that's really important, especially since this is very, I mean, it's an expensive, thing to do as opposed to like just acrylic painting. So you really want to be able to take your time and make sure you do everything the right way. Now this resin um, wants you to mix for three minutes and I'm going to do exactly what the bottle says because you don't want to waste any resin and you definitely don't want to put time into a painting that doesn't set up properly because then you can't really use it. You can't sell it. It, if it never dries, then you kind of just have to start over. So this is one of those take your time and make sure you do it the right way things. Now you really want to make sure that you scrape the sides, the bottom, and everywhere else in this mixing cup as well as scraping the sides and everything of your um, stir stick and that's because you really want everything to be 100% fully incorporated in your mixing cup. Now you're going to see a lot of little bubbles in there. That's okay because we're just going to hit it with some heat and pop all those in a little bit. Now in terms of heat you can use a heat gun or a torch and some people use um, a blow dryer. In the beginning I actually did use a blow dryer and my artwork always ended up really busy because a blow dryer is going to push more air than it is going to get warm and you really want that heat to pop the bubbles. So just keep that in mind when trying to decide if you want a heat gun, a torch, or just using a blow dryer. Now, um, for this piece, I'm going to use hot pink from Just Resin it's a slightly transparent color. Um, it's a paste. I'm also going to use dark turquoise from Color Obsession. It's also a paste and slightly transparent. And I'm going to also use Salt Water by KS Resin. It is also a paste. Um, I'm actually also going to use some Stone Coats white base tint. I've put it in this squirt bottle just to make it easier to use. 
and also some titanium white from Just Resin. All of these paints, except for the KS, I have available on my website, artisttilldeath.com. Now, you need to have some mixing cups available to you as well. I just use these little Dixie cups, mouthwash cups. They are like three ounce. Um, I think they're three ounce little cups. So actually they may be an ounce and a half. I can't remember. Actually they're ounce and a quarter probably. So you want to pour as much resin into your little cups as you want represented in your painting. So for example, if I just want a little bit of the dark turquoise, then I'm not, I'm just going to pour a little bit into this cup. And if I want more, let's say the hot pink than anything else, and I'm going to pour more of the resin into that cup than the other ones. And that's because you really don't want to waste your resin. You only want to make as much of the color as you intend to use on the piece. It's really, really easy to just get excited and just pour a whole bunch of resin in the cups and ultimately end up not using all of it in the end. I always like to stir up my pigment just a little bit to make sure that it hasn't separated. It tends to do that when it's set for a little while, kind of like if you have some peanut butter or some ketchup just sitting on the shelf, you always want to shake it up before you use it or else it has that like oily film on top. I'm going to mix a titanium white and my white base tint from um, Stone Coat together. And that is because the white base tint is really bright, vibrant white and it's very opaque. Whereas the Stone Coat base tint is slightly grayed and um, you kind of use, you have to use a little bit more of it to get um, the opacity that I'm looking for, but if you add too much of the stone coat base tints, your cells won't stay. They'll grow forever and just blob away. So I like to use just a little bit of both. That way I get the opacity that I'm looking for and the cells that I'm looking for. So this is salt water by KS Resins. It's the only metallic that I'm going to use in this painting. When I choose my colors, I like to stick to four colors or less, and I like to have one sparkle or metallic color at least, and at least one flat color. I never want to have all flat colors, and I never want to have all sparkly colors. There's just something really nice about the juxtaposition between um, the sparkly colors and the flat colors together. I also never combine just bright colors. I always have at least one dark color and I never have just all dark colors. I have at least one bright color for the same reason. It's always more visually interesting to me and other people that I've spoken with to have um, a lot of different things going on so that it's not just one note. So after you have your colors picked out and poured and measured and you have the right amount of resin that you want to use, um, also note that you want to start out with 10% pigment to resin ratio, roughly, and then build your color from there. If you put too much paint in, then you may end up with like a marshmallow fluff consistency and um, your resin's gonna set up oddly or it'll be too thick for you to even use. So just keep that in mind. You don't wanna waste your paint or your resin. So when you use paint that are made specifically for resin, it's really easy to mix those in to the resin. You can also use a acrylic paints if you want to. I would make sure to like filter those or sift those through like colander or 
something that will get all the dried paint chunks out because acrylic paint tends to do that. I would try to stay away from oil paints because those never really dry and they can give you pitting and divots in your um, resin ultimately. So just, I would just try to stay away from those, especially as a beginner. So now that I have my colors all mixed up, it is time to start the painting. And for my artwork, I always like to try to put some clear down first, and that just gives the tinted resin something to glide across as I'm trying to manipulate and create my artwork. If you just pour resin onto a dry surface, it's not going to flow very easily. And I'll just demonstrate that for you guys real quick. So if I pick this up and tilt it, it doesn't really fall evenly. You can see those two little dips in the front kind of moving beyond everything else. And that could really hinder a design if I have something that I really like and I'm moving it around. It's not flowing evenly. It's it's off. But if I coat everything in a thin layer of resin that's clear beforehand, then it'll all flow at the same rate over the surface. And that's kind of what I'm looking for in all of my artwork. Now, if you're going to be pouring on a canvas like I am today, you really need to prep it. And I did that before this video started. I have that video on our YouTube channel, Artist Till Death. I will link that at the end of this. I'll show you guys the web URL for you to find if you're interested. Really need to prep it or else it's going to dip in the middle from the weight of the resin. And that's not really awesome, but it can kind of be a bummer since everything's going to be flowing to the middle. You really need to make sure you prep your canvas. So I'm just heating the resin to pop the bubbles just a little bit. And this is going to be a puddle pour. And what that means is I'm going to pour a puddle of resin on the canvas. And then I'm going to tilt it around to kind of create my design. Now I have these four colors. And these two are kind of darker, so I want to just stagger, stagger them. So it's kind of light, dark, light, dark. I'm going to start with the white and then my dark turquoise, then the pink and the blue. And these don't have to be in any order, really. You can um, stagger them and go back and forth. It really doesn't matter. It's all according to what you want it to look like. That's all that matters. There's really no wrong way to do resin art, which is awesome because, for example, like portrait work, you really want it to look like the person you're painting. But with fluid art like this, all it has to do is catch someone's eye and that's it. That's its only job, is to be visually interesting. You can see as soon as I hit the heat on it, all these little bubbles were popped and it made a break in the color. That's what all those little freckles are there. So now that I have my puddle, I'm just going to tilt it around and let the paint stretch across the surface and pull it back. Maybe I'll roll it this way next. If you hear a puppy in the background, that's Bowie. He just wanted to say hello.
So that's it. That's the basics of a puddle pour and a tilt. I'm going to add a little bit more heat to this piece. And as it sets, it's going to let the resin relax and move and puddle in different ways. And so it's going to give different designs. I think also I'm going to hit it with a little bit of torch and tilt. Let's see if I can create a couple of other extra elements. Wherever you add more heat to it, it's going to thin it out more. And so those areas are going to move faster. The thinner the resin is, the faster it's going to move. See how that just bolted across? I'm really liking how this is turning out. Anytime you work with resin, the biggest challenge is going to be where to stop. When should you stop working on a piece? That's always a challenge for any resin artist, whether you've been working with resin for a long time or if you're new to it. It's always a challenge. Oh, I will tell you that you have to be very delicate and specific when working with a torch because if you put too much heat on one area you can scorch your resin and that'll leave this weird scab texture which is very not attractive and um, you're gonna have to sand your piece down to fix it so be very light and deliberate with your application of heat There we go. I like it. Now we let it set up overnight and I will be back in the morning to show you what this guy looked like. Thanks for watching y'all. Bye. So here's our piece the next day cured up super smooth and beautiful. All those awesome details.
Looks like a giant seahorse. I do have to finish the sides and the back of it, but that won't take long to do.